alcohol right on the desk there. Moses out of his mind. Um, we'll see how this goes. We're going to head into Nuke. It is Dignitas versus G2. Now, is that Danish bias? You know, out of his mind for going against Dignitas? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Who do you think is going to take this, Anders? I'm going to have to go with Danish House. I, lately, I, I'm just putting all my chips on, on Danish Counter-Strike, as wild as it can be. But honestly, Nuke is a crazy game to be, or crazy map to be playing in a best of one. You, even when you're very good on this map, you can lose control of it so quickly if you don't have the economy. It's really, really difficult to play. Uh, we'll see how it goes. They have a flashbang and a Molotov on MSL. That seems like a very designed grenade buy, and I'm curious how they're going to try and use it. A big fight out in the yard. They're trying to get down into secret, bumping into each other. Please, ding this house. A little bit of order in the chaos right now. Body going to try and catch them jumping over. It's RPK who picks up a strong kill, taking down Rubino. More coming. He's protecting the vents. Not going to let anyone in. And Body hitting a headshot on Magus. RPK still doing work. And he gets reload all day in this vent. He's going to go for it. The triple kill. A great shot down for G2. Fantastic start for the French side. G2 continuing to shine in the pistols, but more importantly, what clean rotations coming out from G2. Not a second wasted. Yes. Everybody getting into position so rapidly as soon as the information was given, the fact that Dignitas are going across the yard, boom, RPK instantly in the vents there to support the man, holding behind him body, and it's it all just falls into place so neatly for G2. Dignitas, they were powerless. They needed headshots, and they weren't able to hit him. And you also get a sense for how difficult it is for them, because if it was just RPK, then they could try and rush him down in the vent, but because bodies on the stairwell, they have to all the time be worried about uh, anyone sort of, you know, taking a shot at the side of their face. Yep. It's all SMG similar, please. Why is this happening to us every time? Well, this is like a, a isn't this like a signature for G2? Just, they they are a team that lives and dies by SMGs, man, seriously. And RPK, I love to watch RPK because he's like the only guy who will actually tap with SMGs as well, long range. Like Mac 10 halfway across the map, tap, 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 still finds kills. Smith is the one who's farming right now in the yard, though. Yeah, he even got the bomb dropped down right in front of him. So Convic, the deagle in hand. He's been known to take deagle shots, but RPK going to deny that fairly easily. No one goes down on G2, but you notice already in the second round, and... That's maybe a bit out of the norm, but they already bought Molotovs to throw in to, to try and deny any kind of any rush. So they're paranoid G2 that there's going to be some sort of quick rush in. They, they threw them right away to hut, to squeak. They want to make sure Dignitas didn't get anything done. Mm -hmm. And Dignitas could have gone for the sort of play where they smoke off the squeak door and then try and run down vents to get the bomb plant in B, right? Yep, so which is a common play that we see in, the, in these sorts of rounds where you just want to get the bomb plant. So that, that strategy is like old as sin on Nuke, right? T side, yes. just go down vents, plant immediately on the B site. Try and keep him busy. And look, there we go. Speak of the devil. Magus, he's going to make it down. Can he actually get the plant, though? Or are they going to be able to deny it? Man on vent. Not going to be able to get it. Shoxy trying to get close enough. He's got the H team. It's going to get the kill. But still a successful round for Dignitas. They get the bomb plant in the nick of time. Man, it's almost like it's not the first time we're watching you. Great job on Dignitas. They don't kill anybody, but they get the bomb plant down. That's perfectly fine. Look at the money they have going into this uh, fourth round here. $800 bonus on top of everything else. Cajun, if he wanted, he could get an AWP, but he's not going to do that. I'm a bit sad about that. And for UMP squad, please, G2, please. This, this is ludicrous. This I, is do, I do not condone this. Uh, the reason why they do this, this is the mentality that they have. I mean, they're Envy insane. had that style as well, where they th they're like, well, if we we keep the SMGs, the UMP is OP right now. It is actually the players are getting so good with it, and it's so powerful for the investment that you make into it. It might as well be a rifle sometimes with how much damage it does, and that's how the players are seeing it. They're like, well, if we just stay on the UMPs, all right, if we lose this round, it doesn't matter. We have a full buy for the next round still, right? We just double up with more eco on the next round, so. It's it's just like a calculated risk from G2. They might have situations where they'd win if they had an M4, but the UMP is just so powerful. I'm gonna chalk it up to mass delusion. I think that's a better explanation. I this is so wild. RPK will pick up the first kill. Body coming down. Really good shot. Taking out Rubino. Could have been a bit more, but Smith and Body are both gonna be going down. It's not looking good right now. Scream. Well, shock, sorry, will tap away and take down MSL, but headshot to the side of the face. Config with the triple kill. And now Scream 
half health in a one-on-two here with the UMP. Trying to see if he can get that retake in. Actually, probably maybe got a shot on Magus then. That would have been interesting. Suddenly it would have been a one-on-one. -on -one. He knows where he is, but he still has to dig him out of the corner. And with no grenades to actually do that, it is really difficult. And there comes Magus with the kill. And G2 going to lose the round. Dignus House will pick it up. And G2 can still buy into this next one, but I... I still, I still don't like that buy. I think it's, it's madness. It is tough, but it's so, it's so close. Actually, an uncharacteristic mistake from Shox overextending. Usually, he's your anchor. He is so intelligent. You want him in those sorts of positions, but he steps wide looking for a kill and guesses wrong as to where that player is going to be, so he gets picked off for free. If he stays alive there, then Dignitas are stuck. They're going to get caught in a sandwich between Shox and Scream. So, I mean, that's how nuts this is. It's like, yes, they go four UMPs, but they nearly win the round with them. It's just the finest of margins. Dignitas are able to squeak through, and they've got a round on the board. 3-1 lead for G2. And G2 can bring it back in style. If they pick up this round, then the Danish team still won't have that much money to buy, so they can still reset this fairly quickly. Good Molotov there. The timing forcing them to keep walking. I kind of wish they would have put some shots for the smoke, just because if there was anyone there, maybe could have got lucky. That wouldn't have been unreasonable. But now they're down in secret. There were at least some of the force while Rubino was being left behind up on the silo to make sure no one sneaks in behind, which is quite a good idea. Should always have someone at least uh, checking that. They're being allowed quite far in. And uh, where's the defense going to be coming in? There's not many grenades on G2 to stop any kind of a plant here. Now you're going to be watching for it, basically. Scream wow. is holding in ramp, and they're going to be able to get out onto the lower side for free. And this is an impossible situation for G2 now. So many angles that they're going to have to worry about going into the retake on B. And yeah, it came down to actually getting that kill. MSL will win the duel. And now life gets so difficult here for G2. Rubino going to rush down Smith. Scream going to be looking the wrong way. Turns back just in the nick of time to get the kill. But it's still a man advantage here for Dignitas. I've nearly never seen anything like this. G2 just not realizing they were in B until it was too late. Rubino going to take down RPK. He came down from the silo in through main to pick up that kill. And now shocks and Scream. With just the rifles left, and yeah, this is this is the problem. It it is true, it's a risk going for the UMP thing, and if it works, you get so much more money to work with than you know you can power a lot of the first half based on it. But if you don't, and you're playing on the CT side, you could be in a position like they are now. They they can put together a buy because of the safe rifles here, but if they don't win this next round, that initial UMP gamble will have sort of almost dominoed to this point where they're going to be ecoing almost, and it, it's really dangerous. Yeah, because not only that, this is allowing for Dignitas to start building a bank as well. So life gets more difficult for G2 because they're going to be going up against a Dignitas if they continue to get bomb plants, who is going to have the money to go for the buy. So a very difficult sort of scenario now for G2 where they need to just kind of close the door on Dignitas, try to stifle them early on, and shocks with the AWP. Takes a little bit of time to get there, but he is hunting for that opening shot. Only issue is this is a fairly common angle, and so Dignitas not even going to peek it. Shocks are like this, though. He's going to be going over to Secret. He realizes they've gone there a couple of times and going to try and beat the timing with the AWP. It's quite an aggressive play, especially because he has no backup, so if they run him down, he's going to be in trouble. But I still love this, and a headshot on MSL. Very well done here, and Molotov up behind and flashbang, making sure no one can follow him. Genius play from Shocks. Worth it. He uses quite a bit of his utility, but he gets the man advantage for his team. The only problem is, look at this G2. They hardly have any utility left, and we have a minute left on this clock. Body has got a single smoke grenade. That's going to be very difficult because the Dignitas have a massive nade advantage at this point. They get to do what they want. There's hardly anything to stop them. Now the angle gives it away. Megus knows that there's a man on the rafters. Perfectly done by Vegas, but RBK is alive on the site to trade. Two for two so far. He even picks up a third. This is nuts. It's down to Rubino. How did this happen for Dignitas? He hasn't reloaded yet. He still gets a headshot. RPK, he had two bullets, and he hits one of them with a headshot. That was very nearly a quad kill for RBK. We'll give him almost give it to him there. He's also at 8 and 3 right now doing a really fine job. So what a round for G2. I'm talking about nade superiority. The mo the nades that happened here for G2. The smoke was well, actually it came back to hurt body because Magus was in position to see the angle where it came in, but that single flash grenade was perfect for G2. It flashed full three people. RPK is able to just pick them off at will. Whereas Dignitas that nade superior superiority I was talking about, they all died with like three nades each on them. They weren't using their grenades. And now, Dignitas, temporary setback for them. They have bought all they can this round. If they don't win it, they're going to be ecoing. And just to point out, uh, it's still early days, but Cajun hasn't actually picked up any kills yet. So it'd be nice if they could somehow put him into play, just to give him a confidence boost. I think he's the sort of player that 
needs a little bit of a good start just to to feel that he's in the game as well. It's it's hard if he's going to fall completely out of the map. Shocks and Smiths, especially Smiths here, holding outside. Scream also on the other side. A good crossfire there. If they try and hunt down Smiths in this corner, he can't run anywhere. But if they do, Scream is going to be there to pick up the return kill. Nice. Smith picking up a second one. Sick play from Smiths. We've actually seen some very strong play from Smith so far in this major qualifier, and he's continues yes. to deliver here. Two kills for him with the AWP, holds his own with no support from Scream either. Scream was in hell, locker room, right? He could have gone for it to try and support, to draw attention away from Smith, but Smith was on his own and he comes through in the end. Three-man advantage now for G2 in this key round. And well, there's gonna be Megas picking up one kill, but Shox is in position to trade immediately. And RPK, he's close enough to hear Rubino stomping away. And so they have all the info necessary now, G2. They know exactly where Rubino's coming from and what his options are. You can already see the nades going down to try and block him off. Yeah, at this point, you just want some kills. See if you maybe, if you're really lucky and get two, you get a bomb planned in. Try for it once, but Shox is there to pick it up and a good reset here for G2. That should be, yeah, a bit of a break for them now. No money for Dingus has to buy. So... 5-2, and they're going to continue to build. So, really good job on them. And a, a, this is just a good reset for them early on in the half. Nice shots from Smiths. Solid work from him. And, well, G2, they stabilize. And you're right. I mean, after a bumpy start, where they do allow Dignitas to get some confidence going, to start putting some pressure on, they get two rounds on the board, Dignitas. G2 stabilize. Now they're the ones who've got the money. They've got the full buy, and it's going to be Dignitas with practically a hard eco, not a single grenade to back up these pistols. Tech 9, two P250s, and a whole lot of hope. And shocks. he doesn't care. Takes config out already, and this is going to be a blender moment. Scream, only going to get the one, but then Scream is not the guy you want in a spray situation like that. Yeah, and he was also in the, in the middle of the floor there. You know, he couldn't actually go anywhere, so he got caught a bit by the timing. Smith goes down. Megis picking up the kill. This is not good for G2. Body there to pick up the kill. Not allowing Cajun to run away with that AWP, but... More than anything, G2 have to sustain their economy. It's not taken off yet. If they lose another player in this round, it's actually a really big problem for them. So they have to keep fighting here and just stay alive. Rubino and Magus do not in position to really help each other out, which is a real shame. Because more than anything, they need to set up a refrag. Did he hear him jumping down? I'm not sure he made enough noise. Body right out there. And Magus going to be going down, just not realizing in time. Rubino coming up, but he can't find the timing. That's a shame. There it is with a pistol. And that's the third kill they needed. Very good job. Not bad. That's a nice shot. Not going to be able to get it, even though he had the angle. No Kevlar there, so the aim punch wrecks him. And that's a sixth round on the board for G2, but a very successful... I'd say this is a successful hard eco, considering yeah. the investment that Dignitas made. Sure, they didn't get a bomb plant, but they get three kills out of that. Here's what's... Uh, oh, well, an interesting tweet. The double monitor going on. I like it. And Love from Australia. Sorry, Australia. Renegade's out of the tournament, not able to make it. He's, he's got the Kleenex the box there as well. We all know what that means. It's um, it's it's really interesting because what G2 have done at this point is they have adjusted to take care of the secret problem, right? They're no longer just letting Dignitas run down secret. So now I'm curious to see if Dignitas can come up with another attack because that secret play is, is sort of been cancelled. Sharks has been there once. Smith has been out there defending the yard. So... They've done a pretty good job of that. We're seeing a very similar setup to the one where Dignitas were able to sneak all the way down to B. G2, they're predicting this. They've blocked them there now a couple of times. You're right, and now they're really trying to stack these positions where if Dignitas try and rush A or rush ramp, they're going to run into a stiff opposition. Shox has already been boosted up into ramp as well with Scream there to back him. But this is really G2 just consolidating the defense on the upper site. Yeah, this is very powerful. And, I mean, Smith is so far back out here as well that he can just, as he just did, run into the A-bomb side and he'll be there. Sort of defending yard and everything. There is now, again, there's a way for them to get down secret. Are they going to realize it? Config and MSL could do it. This is probably going to be a crunch on B from ramp and secret. And that can definitely work out, but then you don't realize Shox is here. Easy pick on one. Rubino very nearly going down. He needs to take care of Shox. Scream is there as well. Rubino going to get the one he needs to get the next one too. His teammates are trying to reconnect from the other side of the map, but Rubino's the one holding the bomb. And Shox is walking in behind. Rubino's down. MSL with a kill on Smith. It might be too late here. 30 seconds left. 
left, and they need to run up there. They pick up the bomb, and that's the first little bit of a start there. MSL gonna go for the bomb plan. Two versus three. If they lose this round, G2 are gonna be in a really good position for a long time in this first half here. RPK realizing that someone might be coming in behind, but oh, what a shot from MSL. It draws the attention away, and Config can get the kill. He's now in a one on two, and that defuse, is it gonna come through? Tab one, Shox is holding it in. I don't think Config can actually stop this. He's just too far away. It will be the round for G2. Config with a double kill and closing the door <laughs> on body. That's it. Still, G2 win it, even if it costs them a lot. That's really important. A lot could have gone wrong in that round. If, I mean, that boost for shocks and then the follow up with Scream, mm. because they get to cancel that part of the ramp push. Yep. It's just, it's almost too late for Dignitas. Dignitas have got to feel like they got read like a book in that round. Because of that setup, the double setup and ramp, not common. You usually leave only the one guy over there in ramp. The fact that G2 are just hard countering it, it looks like Dignitas are going to go back out into the yard now trying to change it up. It hasn't worked in ramp room, and so go back to what's to, to a default sort of play that has worked in the past. Get the wall of smokes down, as you guys can see, cutting it off in half. Nice use of an incendiary there just to kind of stifle things here for Dignitas. No cap for Smith to uh, try and take any kind of a shot through with the M4. He's trying a bit, actually doing some damage there. I mean, it's free damage. Oh, even more now. Got to be careful here. Uh, just a reminder, this is uh, another match where the winner will go into the major. So we got to got to just set up that one as well. Right now, G2 looking good, but it's nuke, so we can't get carried away. Even 7-2 could very quickly turn around. It's a bit bittersweet for G2 as well, because they'll have stopped on the corpses of their countrymen in order to get this far as well. Classic scream shot coming out, but he will be get the kill by Cajun, who only think finds his second kill of the game here. Config picking up a shot as well. RPK going to be going down. It's crumbling. It's falling apart for G2. These rounds are so massive. Any round you can win on the T side is going to be huge. Cajun with another shot, and now shots the last one left, one on four, and he's going to have to try and back up. This is a huge round, and this is really important to point out. All the rounds that the Inters have won have been rifle rounds. Normally, if you get three rounds on the T side, that could just be because you won the pistol. But these are clean rifle rounds. That's a huge sign for the Danish team. And now, the Cajun even is in the game. It could get very interesting. The money for G2, oh no. I thought they had more. Now, they're in a bit of a tight spot. That was painful to watch as well for Smith, because I guarantee that was a four by three situation. If we got a replay of that, where Cajun, he walks right by, and we can see it. <laughs> we can see it. But Smith can't. That's brutal. He could have denied the bomb plan. Regardless, round of eco coming in here for G2, trying to stabilize a little bit, but Dignitas now, it's looking very good for them. They def I mean, Dignitas are a team to get hype as well. You could hear the shouts, I'm sure, on the stream. Uh, you win a big round like that, and they're going to set it up. G2 not going for a, for a force in this round. It would have been maybe a sign of desperation if they have, if they had done it, but uh, they're going to... And keep that cool, see if they can continue here. Good defense here in the lobby from Ding Tass. It's actually a very, very easy way to lose rounds on uh, in, in on Nuke if you're on the T side, is if you end up just, uh, well, <laughs> that's unfortunate. If you end up having too few people in lobby and you get run over by the CT push, that can definitely lose you some rounds. Body and Scream are left, and I think Ding Tass are going to be in a just fine position. No, absolutely. 7-3 right now for G2. And I do like it. Instead of going for the force and taking a huge risk, it's just G2 taking one round break. They still have an acceptable lead. They let Dignitas get up to four rounds. If you go 11-4 G2, that's still a very solid scoreline. And so, just hang back. Body's got an AK to play with, so it's not a problem. Yeah, but I would say at 11-4, Dignitas have the buffer that even if they lose the pistol, they can, they can come back in this game, right? So... I think D2 have to be worried after this round, like really worried. Especially because they, and they sort of found the solution defending Secret earlier, mm -hmm. and then they gave up doing it again. I don't think they can afford to do that anymore. I think they need someone to know, not just guess, but really know if that Secret push is coming. Oh, no, that's bad. Because now Body is in a... I mean, he needs to hold on to this AK at all costs. He has to survive this, and he will. They won't hunt Dignitas. They're maintaining their edge. And now, Body, there's an option. He can go ahead and hold on to that AK and still pass over the AWP to Smiths if he wants. Or he's, that mean he can obviously give over another rifle to somebody else. Smiths is going to go for the drop. And yeah, there's the AWP buy coming in from Body. 
So they will be able to actually establish a pretty strong defense here. So G2 after all. Shox has to take the hit and go for the FAMAS, but still. Okay, if you're, if you're brand new to the game, if you've never watched Nuke before, what's worth sort of, if you want a, an idea about why we're getting excited about the T rounds, just imagine that they essentially count double because it can be really hard to pick them up on the T side. So every time they win one, it has a really big impact on the final outcome of this game. G2 are able to buy again. Smith and the AWP and Shox is being all over the place. Very, very mobile at the moment. Shox running around down in those hallways. He does have the Molotov. We've seen this setup before where people will hold this corner, and as soon as anyone comes out, they'll just throw down the Molotov and then try and fight. If anyone tries to challenge them, they'll fight that person, but there can't be any real follow-up behind it. So yeah, and you know, another good play from Shox, I think, where he's controlling the, the secret. He knows what's happening down there. He does, but I'm still curious to see. I mean, now they have access to A main. They needed to get that shot onto screen, but unfortunately, he's going to win the duel versus Config, and no possible reply there from MSL, despite the fact that he is getting closer. Scream has got the angle, gonna spot the man on high, and there's a shot. Scream with two kills, now two headshots. And now it was going to be the A main play, and I think that what Dignitas were hoping to do is pick off the man playing Raptor so that they can pinch through main and pinch through lobby onto the A site. Now they're in that tight spot again. Rubino and Cage in the last two alive, but they've turned it into a two on two somehow. Yeah, they're really bringing it back. I have no idea how, because you're right, they were in a terrible position. Now they're gonna get the bomb plant down. Shocks and body, they can't stop it. Rubino actually cancelling it for a moment. That could be very dangerous. Shox is walking in behind. He's making a lot of noise with the Famas here and in a really bad position. Just no chance to get that kill on Rubino, who's now picked up a triple and body in a one versus two. This is a disaster for G2. Almost getting shot in the back. Body has to clutch this one. It's really tough and he's going to get shot down. Quad kill. Rubino picking it up a fifth round for Dignitas. And he's now topping the scoreboard in the server as well with 12 kills. That's a massive round. Then it get I, now G2 have a series to consider if they will if they want to try and force here because five rounds on T side, it's already getting mildly out of control. And if they eco here, it'll be six seven, and it's hard to keep up the morale at that point in time. Yeah, here comes the tactical timeout as well used by G2. First one of the half here for them. And so they're down. They've got 30 seconds to, ta to have a bit of a chat. And you're right. I mean, they can try and go for the force, but I still feel like that would be really reaching. Man, Mexico boy is so hyped up. He's the person you're seeing closest to the camera. Every time that happens, his arms just shoot up. No, Megis is, yeah, he's pumped up. And on the other side of that, he also gets really angry when they lose, which I think is hilarious. He's actually a player who, who can't, like some teams, they'll just watch a demo immediately after the loss. They go back to the practice room and they watch the demo. He can't. He no, has I'm to have time to cool off, and then he'll like watch it later at night or like the next day before the match. But like with a he, bucket of ice cream, yeah, he, he actually has to have time where he can just like cool off and, and calm down because he gets so pumped and invested. Oh wow! Dignitas know that G2 don't have much, so they're leading the charge with MSL on the Mac 10. So even if there was a stack in Ramp or in B, they don't care. They're just giving up the Mac 10. Very very well read for MSL. He's this is a really smart play from him right now. He's gonna charge in. He gets both those kills. The adjustment on Smith's not at all bad and pretty much defuses this round entirely. Triple with the MAC-10. Both the MAC-10s have gone down, but nobody cares. That's going to be a fine round there. Six, seven. The MSL making $10,000 in the back here. That's pretty good. Yeah. And moving into the 14th round. That economy has just rocketed up for Dignitas. I, I, because Dignitas are so, have been pretty good playing Yard, I love to see G2 try for, two, for a two-man push out there. Go aggressive, try and fight them before they even get into to Secret or Volcano. I think that's even set up for that. Three rounds ago, four rounds ago, basically, Config was holding very far back in Yard, just set up to counter any kind of ultra-aggression coming out in Yard from G2. And this time around, it's Rubino kind of hanging around over there with the smoke. So he is actually going to play it a bit faster. And look at this, the change of pace coming in from Dignitas, not wasting any time at all. They want to go for another ramp push, but this time Scream is in position to pick, to trade two for one, and that's good enough. Look at the damage that's been dealt to Magus and Cajun as well. They're both at half HP. Yeah, this is perfect. All oh, with the timing here. Rubino going to get a free kill on Smiths. He was just looking at that red container. Now they're in a three on two with Cajun going down to shocks and the bomb dropped in the middle of nowhere. How are they going to go and pick that bomb up again? This should be around for G2. And you're right, that initial trade for Scream, just really good job on him. Yeah, he held mouse one. He knew what was coming at him. Ooh. What is that? Did A graphics bug. Just go through the floor. Actually, you can shoot right through that floor. I don't know how many people know that, but that whole box that shocks us in is penetrable from almost all angles. So Rubino going to lose the spray fight there. Make just thinking that someone else will come and help out shocks. 
Megis obviously doesn't know the wall bank possibilities there. And the bomb down Ryan in front, 45 seconds. He's going to go for a fight, but Shox will take him out. And that's a round for G2. Triple kill for Shox and 8 6 to the scoreline. Yeah, there we go. I mean, even with Scream, though, it's still not a spray, it still bursts. And both of the headshots just. I love it. That style, usually you want somebody with an A4 over there, not the silenced, who can just go for the sprays to counter the ramp rush, but they're making it work this time around G2. And yeah, we're gonna get the replay here. No, we didn't, did we? I don't think we did. We did? Um, no. I admit, I, sometimes there are differences between in-game and, and Go TV. so it could have been that it was only on our monitor that, that, it, that it popped up, or it looked like, maybe we're just both hallucinating, I don't know. 15, 15 round coming up. I think we do have a replay of it. We'll see if we can catch it. But I actually suspect that it wasn't Visible on uh, for uh, for Magus there. I'm wondering. Ooh, Cajun, I, thought I saw his crosshair. Cajun setting up for a Molotov that's going to land on the hut. So we're going to see some sort of a execute. But Shox has picked up two big kills already, and that's going to put uh, yeah a bit of uh, an end to any kind of a yard push here. Now, even with the Molotov on hut, he's not going to help them out. No, you can already hear the communication. This is the 15th round as well, the last round of this first half, and a real chance here for Dignitas to turn things around. But Smith is going to find Cajun B. That was out in the yard. And now life gets fairly uh, tricky here for Dignitas. Two on four scenario. And G2 should not be making the same mistakes that they made in the last round where they're pushing when they have the man advantage. Now it's a matter of just sitting and holding angles. You can see Shoxi in position to shut them down if they try and push for A. Smith with the second kill, gonna catch Rubino. And now it's MSL alone. And you wish that there was a world where Shox was like, ah, I'll just you know, try a shot and boom, <laughs> lands it on MSL, but not this time. He had the angle. Yeah, he's gonna get it anyway. Good job on Shox. Another triple kill for him. He ends at 15 with Scream as well. We'll get a look at that glitch as well. I do suspect that it's only here because I think if it, yeah. Yeah, he saw it. Oh, he did see it. He saw it. That's really interesting. He, he, his crosshair comes down, so I think. Did he jump like right in between two brushes or something? And that's, I don't know. That's odd. Mm. That's like head and shoulders. That's wild. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen anything like this. Well, I'm sure that, uh, that someone from Valve will be looking at it. <laughs> right. Um, Turner are just getting payback on Valve right now Yeah. for all these Steam log on errors. They're like, hey, take a look at this. Now, 9-6 as a first half finish. I, if it was any other map, we'd be saying it's final for G2. You're playing CT side. That's that's pretty much all right. I would say Dignus has a very good shot at taking this map. And traditionally as well, the, the Danish are so good at playing CT side on on Nuke. I mean, going all the way back to teams like Western Wolves, yep. they've always been really strong at this sort of stuff. Rubino has been doing very well on the T side, but Scream there with the ADR, he's definitely stepping it up. Yeah, no, Scream has been everywhere. He's been helping, he's been supporting Smiths and Yard. He's been over at ramp where, you know, Dignitas continue to try and put that ag aggression in there. And so, yeah, he's just able to just farm up all over the place. And that's that's one of the key factors here. I mean, RPK had the strong start with a couple of rounds at the beginning of the half, but Scream and Shox, like, they're instrumental to big wins for G2. And look at that, both of them at 15 kills right now. It's not only Scream doing a lot of work, Shox, he's right up there with them. And these are win conditions for G2, essentially. You need these two players to be hitting their shots and getting in there. I absolutely agree. All right, the triple monitor set up and a cup of, I'm going to say tea. Looks like and tea. And that bowl from Ikea, I recognize it. Yeah. See, I know I know stuff like that because I have them myself. <laughs> that, that little white one. I'm sure of it. I was like thinking, well, it does seem fairly dark as well. So Scandinavia, it makes sense. Probably already night over there even though it is only like, what, four in the afternoon? Oh, six, yeah, definitely night. And like 80% of all furniture in Scandinavia is Ikea anyway, so. Exactly. I, so I've heard of people going to Ikea just to have meatballs, right? Just to just to eat the food. Yeah, we do that, Semla. No. Uh, I get dragged along every once in a while. My wife says, <laughs> it's let's go to Ikea and just see what's up. <laughs> Why not? Okay, then. It is the 16th round, um, and we are at a 9-6 scoreline here. G2, if they win the pistol, this will be a very interesting game, then they could definitely take it away. And um, they have a bit of a setup planned. I mean, one smoke, not that much, but the flashbangs as well. And with shocks up on the rooftop here, you've got to hope that they've got some excellent flashbangs to land in the A-bomb side. That would be fun. If you land them through the ceiling uh, windows there, you can you can get a good flash in on someone on A, and that could be enough for a setup. Breaking the windows, the follow-up with the flashbang, and MSL not flashed in the side. In fact, he can still see, so he gets the one kill. Rubino in the corner, taps away, gets one. Another headshot, Rubino with a triple, nearly taking down his teammate. In the middle of all of that now, shocks in a one-on-three, and he drops. 
Config with the kill, but Rubino in that back corner. And if we get the replay, I will try and explain why that position has become so popular in pistol rounds. Because there is almost no chance that G2 will have a Molotov. If you play this later on, you can be almost sure that you're going to be firebombed out from that position. But in the pistol, look how far they have to extend into the bomb site to fight him. He just keeps falling back again and again and again, and they can't do anything about it. It's really, really a popular position for that very reason. And, well, when you're hitting all the headshots as well, it definitely looks good. Rubino saving his team in that round because, I mean, without him getting three shots, I think G2 just run onto the site and we're looking at a totally different situation, unfortunately, for Dignitas. And so individual play making the difference. And it's a 9-7 scoreline right now with G2 going for the four spy. No bomb plant for them. So going into the second round, they're looking to apply as much pressure as possible. And Cajun B has already spotted the rush coming at him. He's going to get that smoke down to block it off as well, it looks like. But he misses it. They have a way in, but it doesn't matter. Big spray coming in from Cajun. And he only runs out of bullets at the end. But still, with the pistol, we'll pick up a triple kill. 9-8. to eight. And there we go. Come on. <laughs> All right. The war cries are definitely in. Cajun has come alive. Actually, now, uh, oddly, it's Magus who's falling a bit behind. He's at six kills, but um, if they can just have Cajun, Config, and Rubino doing well on CT side, even I think that will be enough. G2, they haven't had a bomb plant yet, so they're going to be echoing one more time. And Dignitas holding on to three UMPs. I mean, they know they're not going to be up against any pistols here, so it's kind of reasonable for them to be doing it. Hey, this is the depth that's in the Dignitas roster, though, that they can fall back on. If you're going to be at the, competing at the top of the field, you need players who are going to be able to st just step up and take control of matches. Yesterday was Maggie's time to shine with back-to-back -back aces. Today, Cajun doing the work. Look at Config. That's so bold. Bullying them all the way on the T side of the map. That's nice. It's nice to do it in a round like this because it might set them up later to be slower than they normally would be. And now they, they sort of have to think about the idea that maybe He'll be showing up later on, so they now they got to be a bit more worried at least. Planting the seed. Yeah. Man, this is just a brutal shutdown right now. Ah. They aren't able to get anywhere near it. So there will be one kill from Shoxy on a config, but for the rest of it, it's Shoxy and Scream alive, and they're already getting flanked. MSL is going to catch Scream in the back. And so that's Shoxy with the bomb, and he's actually going to oh, make oh. the run for it, and he should be able to get the bomb plant here. He should be fast enough. Oh, Cajun actually very close behind him. Maybe, he, no, I can't catch him in time. That's interesting. Just a bit too much greed on the Danish side, and they allow for a bomb plant. Now suddenly, it goes from being uh, just a weird round to a pretty good round. They get a kill on the bomb plant. Yes. Fine by me. He sneaks right through. Yeah, that's definitely acceptable. Shock's playing at a high level right now. 17 kills. And that has to continue. He needs uh, he needs backup from the rest of his team now at this point. RPK is kind of getting into double digits as well. Body and Smith single digits. And so as this as this match progresses, obviously we're only tied up at nine nine, and we're going into the first buy round here for G two. But we are going to have to see everybody step up here if G two are going to make it. This is a round that w the winner will go on to the major. Both of these teams are 2-1 so far in the group. You need three wins to go to the Major. And you definitely don't want to go down to 2-2 because the competition, the last matches of the day are going to be brutal. No, you're absolutely right. If you make it out here, then it's Christmas early. You can sit back, relax. You know you've made it. But um, as we've been saying, this is pretty much Heartbreak Sunday. There are going to be some teams leaving this tournament. There already have been some, but there are going to be a lot today that are really going to be heartbroken. Config aggressive again, and MSL, he's waiting with the UMP. He must be able to hear them, but he wants to find the perfect timing. Maybe this is it. Body caught rotating, and that's a strong kill coming through. And Cajun with the shutdown on RPK, and shocks and screen. They have hardly any health left. Oh my god, this is a great start for G2. Yeah, and Config's already rotated lower. This is such excellent play coming in. Oh, the timing, though. Shocks, he's going to flank him. Just as he was, as Coffee was trying to peek for the bomb, and now Shock's in position to get the headshot onto MSL. Not going to hit it right off the bat, but still, that kind of stops MSL short and allows for the bomb plant to happen. Two on two retake now situation here for Dignitas. And MSL has got a kit. They have a good nade count, and MSL finds the kill on Scream. It's all on Shock's now to hold the line for the Frenchman. But Cajun full HP, grenades to work with, and the angle on Shock's. Nowhere to go. And a 1v1 win here for Dignitas in the end, staving off defeat. And the absolute war cry coming out from the Danish side. They're so into this game. You can just tell that they're fired up. 
And that one round win was a really big one. Now, luckily, because G2 got the bomb plan that one round with Shockstars alone, and they got it this time, that's $1,600 more than they, they, they would have had. And that means, again, they can still buy into this round. It's really important. <laughs> Vegas is sick, but it feels like it, like these guys are used to Copenhagen games, right? Those old lands where you could just shout, stand up and shout at your opponents because they were literally sitting right in front of you or like the row over. Not you know quite what? possible here with the headsets, but still. I think if you scream loud enough, it's not impossible that they can maybe hear something. I, I really, I really miss that atmosphere. I actually think sometimes the you know the distance between the two teams on stages makes for, I mean, just too much space. Really, I'd like it if there was if there was more. Intimacy, maybe not be the right word, but um, face to face, like that. a little bit more face to face action. Yeah, it is fun. It, it adds to the competition, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. I miss Taz screaming at his opponents. That happy, is, are you happy? That still is one of the best things for me. Twentieth round is up here. Ten nine might not look like much of a difference, but given the side that they're on, given the slight economy that they're building here, it's still not great for Dean's house, but it is being Slowly worked on. Let's we'll see what they can do. Body immediately out, but he goes down to Rubino. And another kill coming through for the Norwegian player. He's going to keep going. He's got 13 bullets. There's the kill. Actually, it's going to be Config stealing it, but Rubino still gets a triple. And 11 <laughs> My god, we're going to have a whole compilation at the end of just Dignitas losing their minds. Yep. They love this. And this forces the second time out out of G2 as well. It's starting to get grim here for the Frenchman. This is a setup. Rubino. And it's perfect. The read, the setup, the fact that Config is there to support Rubino, and so G2 have to worry about two angles when they try and get out of hut. Yeah. It's an impossible situation for G2. I really, really thought, oh, there we are. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, the, the, all that noise is going right into right into our ears. Maybe into you, you, know, you guys at home. I hope you can hear the shouting, because it, it definitely is a lot of fun. Fun. 11-9 is the scoreline, and the 21st round is going to be rolling around, and G2 don't have any money, and now the bank is definitely there with Dana's house. So even if G2 win a round, they need to continue. they got to win consecutive rounds to have any kind of a comeback into this. 21st is coming up, and they have actually bought into this one. Is that half by coming through? And well, I mean, G2, they're, they're, they're hoping to go for the same strategy that Dignitas used on their T side when they were in dire straits with the pistols, just looking to rush ramp and run down Magus. But Magus has got that M4. He's perfectly blind, however, standing just a little bit too wide, but he does get the incendiary down to buy some time. Still, G2 not interested in rushing ramp at all. They're going for the big ramp onto the A site. MSL is ready, though. They just get bodied. Oh, they're running for the smoke to try and get in there, and that is not working out at the moment here. Tap, tap, tap away from Cajun. Gonna get another couple of kills in for the triple. He's got one health left. It looks like he's going to make it through the round regardless. And that's 12 to 9. <laughs> My god. I, this, this has been a while in Counter-Strike. And you, you know what always follows this kind of thing? I'm predicting this. I'm making, I, I promise I haven't checked my phone or anything. It, there's always at least one thread on Reddit that says, wow, Dignitas, says they're out of line, aren't they? They're not out of line, ladies and gentlemen. They're making a major tournament. They're supposed to be this hyped up. So 12-9 is the scoreline here. G2, they're not out of it yet. They can still do this. They can still break that economy on the Danish side. They just have to win one of these opening fights. And Shock's whole oh, timing is so good almost. So close to catching Config. But again, Config, this worked last time. He was able to catch Smiths in the back. And we'll see if Smith, if they're going to check, because that smoke is down. Smith is checking the angle. Config looking up, but he's hiding behind the smoke, and it's a perfect situation. Two kills for Config. And that smoke, it works perfectly for him. He hides right behind it. And that's brutal for G2. Coming out of a timeout, no less. This is not how things were supposed to go. That has got to be incredibly demoralizing, because that's not the first time he's been playing that position. And then it works again. Oh, shot coming through on Magus, but... It doesn't actually take him down. And they are playing now with Cajun at the kill on body there. Two on five. Config finding a third kill for himself. He's hungry for it now. And Scream, I don't know. T-Spawn is nice, I guess. He wants to go back home. There's the truck. Only problem is the keys aren't in the ignition. And you don't have time to hotwire it. <laughs> no. You've got one way through this, Scream. It's five headshots. Let's go. With 40 seconds, I mean, it would be the play of the year, undoubtedly. That's the silver lining. I mean, he set himself up for that. But um, 
time to make it into the legendary. Ah, oh, no, never mind. Rubino is not interested in allowing you know, to uh, spawn a new myth, a new legend. You're done. And we're up to 13 rounds on the board for Dignitas. Man, honestly, there's a four round gap here between the two teams. But Shox has got 22 kills tied with Rubino. Shox is playing so well at the moment. And what you just heard in the microphone, the screaming that's going on for Dignitas was them saying it's not over. I'll do a quick translation. It's not over until we get three more rounds. They are trying to, that in spite of all the cheering, they're trying to keep the mental focus here and say, we gotta, you gotta get everything through. That's the call that's being made right now on Dignitas, so. It's because we've seen teams fall into this kind of trap where they're getting so hype and then they get clocked in the face and deflate completely. It's good that they're trying to keep their cool a little bit, measure it out. But Cajun out in the yard, spots the man, but he misses his chance. Shoxi's gonna drop down. And so now Cajun at least knows that one player was silo and moving around in the yard. The rest of T2 moving in behind the wall of smokes. And we already have a player in position. It's Config holding close. And this is a scary situation. He is going to play it safe. He's giving himself a way out of this. Off angle here, where he stepped out just a little bit. Body going to walk right into it. And will he be able to make it out in time? I don't think so. But he's going to be able to take a whole bunch of them with him. Three kills for him. All headshots. And G2 once again getting slapped. Oh man, he's just playing that corner so well. No one can refrag that first kill, and then the fact that he gets two more just makes it even worse. MSL gets one on Shoxi, and now Smith's alone. He's going to be going down. Rubino will pick up the kill. Dignitas now two rounds away from making the major tournament. And, I mean, it seems like it's almost meant to be at this point. Rubino, Config, even Cajun, who had such a bad start to this game, he has brought it right back. Uh, Cajun has been revitalized, but... Third time out used for G2, and you might as well. You've got another two chances if things keep going this way. You're going to have to dig deep here, G2, because you don't have the economy for a full buy. Everybody floating around $3,500. And so this might be a situation where they're just kind of sitting and waiting, although I think I see Jean talking quite a bit here. Nyak, they're co they're, well, Nyak, Nyak has been around so long working with tacticians like Existence, like Shoxy. He's seen so much CS that he can have a say when it comes to what is going wrong in a match, but that isn't his primary role. He's a manager, and he's there to basically make sure the team has everything that they need, but he does have some insight on the game. I'm surprised to see him step in and say, time out, need to say something here. It's not every time that you see that. Yeah, and he has a background in what, cycling? Cycling so, when so he was he, younger, yeah. Yeah, so I think he has some idea also just like, you know, the, the nature of competition and how to sort of stay focused. I think he's, he's got some some actual background there as well that can definitely be very useful, I think. Uh, more than maybe people realize, I think it, it'll in the future become more important to have people like that in. Now it's 14 to 9 and they, went, they go, went for the buy. I think it's perfectly reasonable here. It's kind of now or never. They got to make a stand. G2, the second half has been rough. They're making their way through. Magus going to get shot down. That's a great entrance. He does some damage, but the fact that they now have ramp control means they've got way more options. And they aren't overcomplicating things either, although MSL from the vents is going to find one pick. Rubino has rotated down as well. And G2 now, they're in a bit of a tight spot just because they have to work their way back around. If they don't commit to ramp, they do have access to hell, but Dignitas have already rotated around to cover that. Shoxy, though, there we go. Beautiful kill on MSL, catches him up. And now it's a man advantage for G2 in a key round. This could change everything. Although, as I say that, Cajun and Config come out of nowhere. Two kills, soon three, and now it's Config 1v1 versus RPK. And we've got to get this kill. RPK can't get it. He hits the headshot, but it was a Galil, and he ends up going down. Oh, no. Config with a double kill instead. And Dignitas, one more round to go. G2, they did everything they needed. <laughs> Look at Megis. You know what's so funny? He's he's having these reactions. Don't don't show me shocks. I can't. I'm gonna end up tearing up if we do that. Um, he's only got six kills, makers. He's the cheerleader right now. He's like, you know, you guys do it, and I'll be cheering. It's fun that you talk about this because actually, there's another player who's talked about that sort of tactic in the past. Is Taz? Or it's like sometimes, yeah, you know, you're you're the spirit of the team, and you're keeping that team going, and maybe your ga in game takes a hit, but doesn't matter because you're there to wreck. And speaking of which, Megis, one for one trade, Config there to trade behind him and back him up. And Cage is still alive in the yard as well. Spotted the man on silo again. The information gained here for Dignitas, and we'll see how they decide to rotate it around to cover this. Focused right now, like lasers, Dignitas. Megis can't even sit still. He's just like rocking back and forth and like clapping his hands. He knows. They have every chance of doing this. Four versus three at the moment. And G2 trying to position themselves 
for any kind of a play. Much of it going to rely on Smith's opening up, but he goes down to Config. He was going to wrap around to get into ramp so that he could pick up that kill on Config, but Config saw it coming and just essentially outplayed him pretty hard there. Now it's just going to be screaming RPK left here. We got 50 seconds and there's no more thinking this through. Now it's all down to the kills here. Two on four. They're going to try and see if they can make their way in, but that smoke already blocking off one entrance. And RPK, he gets the headshot on the missile, but Rubino going to take one down. It's all on screen. And that's it. 69 Dignitas going to make it into the major tournament. They qualify at last. 25 kills on Rubino, 25 on Config. And that's how they do it. And a flawless second half for Dignitas. They don't drop a single round. The first half ended 9-6 for G2 in the lead. Dignitas just 